they say migration there are a lot of different uh, stuffs that we are going to discuss see uh, when it comes to migration there are uh, various components that are involved like uh, we have people process tools technologies and uh, we need to uh, adhere to some strategies while we are migrating right and we also need to follow some methodologies so we will get to understand all these stuffs in uh, uh, very detailed way and when it comes to migration phases we also have a lot of different stages like uh, discover phase uh, assessment phase and then we need to provide uh, the assessment report and followed by migration phase modernization phase and optimize phase so there are various phases that are there like evaluation planning designing and so on and uh, we also have a lot of different processes that we need to follow and uh, this process is processes or process that we need to follow will also be discussed and there are different strategies that we can take when it comes to migration so you might have heard about uh, the seven r's uh, the re hosting re platforming re architecting and so on so we will discuss these stuffs in very detailed way and when it comes to migration it's not about one single migration phase right we have to go through different phases like discovery assessment and so on and for each of these phases we might have to use different tools but one or two tools might have all the different uh, elements that you need to do a full-fledged migration but some tools are specialized in uh, certain areas so we will get to understand which tools will be uh, suitable for what are the what are the options and i also have got a lot of templates and run books which you can leverage for your um, uh, migration stuff so i've got uh, a lot of tools and uh, stuff that i that I've got so i will share all these uh, playbook uh, with you so this is mainly for uh, managing and governing your project end to end i will be providing access to all these uh, tool sets um, how you can use these uh, templates I will also explain what of what are these templates for and how you can use them in different phases right finally we will have uh, migration standards or migration best practices that we can follow and uh, either uh, you are playing a migration architect role or migration engineer role based on your uh, years of experience so you will get all the necessary inputs to become uh, um, a member of a migration engineer team or uh, to become a migration solution architect right so without wasting time we will uh, get into each of these uh, elements that we are going to discuss so when it comes to migration uh, so people think that uh, uh, if we focus only on tools uh, like learning the tools that is used for migration say earlier uh, amazon aws leveraged uh, a third-party tool called cloud endure now it is more or less integrated option within aws marketplace or uh, aws has its own uh, migration tool called mgn okay and uh, they also have separate tools for database migration server migration and so on but they have a separate integrated end-to-end uh, -end offering for migration and they have the tool called MGN. That is what we will uh, be seeing in practical. We will also see the practical for how the other migration scenarios work, like the, how the import and export can be done and how you can use the database migration uh, service for migrating. So when it comes to migration, there are, there are different stuff that we can migrate. So you can do a lift and shift of the entire server from a virtual machine to a uh, AWS EC2 instance or from a physical server to a EC2 instance. And you can also just move the data, migrate the data from on-premises to the cloud. You might, you can do database migration. Uh, you can either migrate uh, just the data or the entire schema as well as the data. You have separate tools available for uh, re-platforming or uh, application migration. Even you can do a virtual desktop migration, VDI solution uh, from on-premises or from third party like uh, Citrix or whatever to uh, uh, Amazon workspaces and we have certain tools which can be used for just service level migration Okay, but is that is little uh, a rare scenario, but then uh, these days uh, uh, Environments are turning towards microservices and we might have to just migrate certain services into a containerized environment on the cloud platform so migration can be this this is a generic term right migration is moving something from one from one location to another location or from um, it, it's like a, it's a generic English term right uh, migration and migration uh, there are different strategies that we can apply but when it comes to migration phases okay so um, 
AWS has got its own uh, processes or phases, but then in general, we follow certain phases that can also be used for your AWS migration. So when you want this migration to be successful, you need to focus on four different areas. The number one is the skill set, then the tools, the right tools to migrate your uh, environment. Then you need to follow the right strategy, the methodology for uh, migrating. Then you have the process. So people, process, and the technology, all these components have to work hand in hand. If one of them fails, then uh, the entire migration will be in a geoparty, right? So you cannot uh, have a successful migration if one of them fail. See, on a very high level, I'm, I mean, the entire uh, two-day session is uh, completely around migration and disaster recovery, right? So we are going to continuously discuss all these stuffs again and again. But on a very high level, we need to have the right skilled people. The skill set is very, very important. And most of the organization, the service provider organization, uh, uh, like Indian organizations like TCS or HCL or Wipro or any companies, so what they generally do is they generally have a specialized team for migration. They call it as uh, cloud center of excellence or cloud migration factory or cloud migration center of excellence. So in general, it is a excellence team specified, I mean, focused on uh, some specialization, right? Uh, the migration specialization. So you will have a migration factory team or uh, they call it as cloud center of excellence for migration or uh, migration excellence team or migration uh, center cloud migration factory so different terminologies might be used but the the uh, important takeaway is that most of the service provider organization they have specialized team who can do end-to-end -end migration starting from discovery to uh, uh, optimizing the environment they can do end-to-end -end all the activities from preparation planning validation and uh, optimizing and securing the environment this team is specialized on doing that okay and uh, that is what most of the organizations are looking at because they want to migrate uh, towards cloud or uh, they have already migrated uh, uh, some portion of the environment and they have seen a lot of delay or they might have uh, seen a lot of uh, gaps in their processes uh, or uh, the procedures that they are following so they want some kind of guidance from an expert provider or an expert vendor who can help them in uh, doing a migration in a seamless way so people is very very important and their skills and their learning the exposure is uh, going to help a lot in uh, migrating different workload to AWS platform and choosing the right tools uh, definitely uh, is important see a uh, customer might have different workloads they might have mainframe system they might have sap workload they might have uh, linux uh, solaris and different uh, flavors of operating systems and uh, different hardware technologies might be involved so you might have to choose the right tools to do the assessment plus the migration right so choosing the right tools is important i will help you with uh, the list of tools that you can use it for discovery assessment migration modernizations for all of these different phases you have different tools and certain tools can be used across all these phases and certain tools can only be used for for example uh, you have a separate uh, unique requirement you need to migrate mainframe systems you have a requirement to migrate solaris system to uh, amazon ec2 instances so in such cases which tools uh, will help you to do the discovery uh, collecting the information that is needed for migration and how to do a um, migration will all i mean these are all uh, uh, separate uh, opportunities and some tools can uh, work with windows linux mainframe solaris and all those things certain tools will be uniquely uh, covering those particular aspects so we will see uh, those tools uh, in in a in few minutes so the methodology right methodology uh, is important see people always stick to technical requirement when i say technical requirement they will go and understand uh, in a qualitative way or in a quantitative way how much cpu how much memory how much consumption what is the current utilization they will uh, gather all the performance characteristics or performance monitoring data so people will be looking at the technical requirement yeah definitely you need to uh, get those information so you need to have a complete uh, uh, configuration management database of the environment that you are planning to migrate but besides that you need to understand the business how exactly they work what is their uh, 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 change calendar and uh, what is the time that they don't allow any execution so when is what is the crucial time for that particular business and you need to understand the business then 
I will also help you how to build a business case. So we need to create a business case because we need to measure right currently what is the situation and where we are targeting and after migration to the target, what kind of um, measurement we have, what are the metrics we are going to look at, what, how do we um, understand uh, whether the migration was successful for the customer and what kind of checks we have, what kind of checklist we need to follow, how do we uh, go and do a user acceptance testing, system integration testing, and we also have to get those uh, information see building a business case in very large migrations or large to large very large migrations i'm talking about more than 300 500 service migration so definitely you need to have a special budget for that see without that you cannot uh, just go and do it so generally what uh, organizations do is they go and get an executive sponsorship for uh, this migration sometimes what they do is they will um, tell us to show some proof of concept or they will ask us to do a uh, pilot migration and and they want to look at that okay so they will ask us to showcase how do we execute the migration what kind of challenges we might come across and uh, help us understand uh, what kind of performance uh, betterment we will get and all those things so customers will expect this and most of the service provider organization they will have a demo environment or they will do a proof of concept or they will show a pilot in one of their uh, test application or one of their uh, uh, less critical application so they will do a proof of concept and they will show case what kind of approach they will take and what is the end-to-end -end strategy that they will follow when they migrate it and in order to show this a lot of organizations they might have a migration dashboard so this might be managed by the project management team or the portfolio management team and you will have a complete visibility on where exactly we are and how many workloads we have migrated what are the different phases we have what are the different uh, uh, waves we have and uh, where we are currently and what are the risks issues identified and what are the lessons learned documentation we have so all these elements will be captured and we'll have a complete dashboard and when it comes to migration, when it comes to uh, going, moving out of the data center to the, uh, the public cloud, customers always look for uh, the total cost of ownership. They want to build a business case. They want to understand what exact uh, cost benefit they are going to get. Okay, so security aspect, scalability aspect, flexibility, and all those things most of the people nowadays they understand it because they are used to cloud either they are using software as a service or platform as a service now people are used to that but then at the ground level if you want to get an executive sponsorship or if you want to get a budget for the migration then they need to understand what kind of cost impact it is going to make this migration is going to bring in right so for which like you need to have a tco or tool set i will i have uh, I'll explain you what are the different tools available and uh, how you can use those tools for deriving the total cost of ownership as part of the migration. See, I, I can go, uh, keep extending this list, but on a very high level, most of the migration uh, methodologies, they go through all these stages. But in some cases, customer might already know their application will work on a public cloud platform and they will say, just go and migrate it. You don't have to do uh, POC pilot and all. We know that our application will be supported in the public cloud and we will just go and migrate it, right? So processes, when I say processes, uh, see, just like that, we cannot migrate an environment. We need to understand uh, their licensing. We need to understand their uh, change management procedure. Um, we need to understand their uh, change freeze calendar, right? Um, so some of the organization might not allow you to do any activity in the December month or March month when they do a financial closure or when they do a, uh, when they have a year end uh, holiday time. And we need to have a lot of uh, uh, knowledge management database right um, lessons learned and uh, what you call um, issues risks and all those registers has to be uh, maintained and not just that so a lot of sops like uh, uh, your standard operating procedures your raid log risks assumptions issues defects all those things has to be captured in a centralized uh, place so they call it as raid log raid is nothing but risk log issue log sorry assumption log and then issue log and uh, the defects log. So we, they will capture these things in a separate template. I will also give you a, a lot of uh, templates uh, around migration. I also have a RACI matrix on how you can follow the migration and so on. But for now, these are the four important critical element that you need to look at when you start the migration. And let's, let's get into the phases. Now, after um, 
uh, understanding that who are going to involve which people mean you know, who are the people who are involved in this migration which tools are going to be used what is the methodology that we need to follow either we are going to do it in waves how many workload we have got and how critical are those what is the priority for each of these uh, workloads why we why we are uh, exiting from the data center what is the business driver so all these things has to be understood and then finally you also need to understand the processes that the customer follows okay what is their change calendar where exactly they store their document how they collaborate and then have these information so all these things has to be understood in a very detailed way now let's